Hey everyone, Dr. Bernard here. You might know me as Chubby Emu. This is my third channel, Big Emus, where I talk behind the scenes and camera stuff. So if you'd like to see more relaxed, non-medical content, here's where we are. I upload here whenever I can. So if you hit the subscribe button, you'll get notifications when I do. I've been making YouTube medical videos of cases I or my colleagues have seen in the past for several years now. They look different now than before. I look different. But the one constant up to this point has been the music. Unconscious. Her husband Josh tells the admitting nurse at admission that she had suffered at least two seizures in the past 30 minutes. It's the same stuff playing. Majority of it comes from the album Fast Fall by Life Formed, and it's used with permission from the artist. I have a link to Life Formed's Bandcamp. If you like the music, please send some money his way for a purchase of the album. This didn't dawn on me until I sat down to think about it, but the era of my life where the music comes from directly transitioned into the era of me making YouTube videos. Let me explain. In 2013, I was at a crossroads in life. I kind of felt like I was going to be stuck in an endless academic hospital medicine bureaucracy forever. You reach a point and like, that's it, brother. It's not even a glass ceiling. It's just a ceiling and you can see it. You know you're going to slam right into it and the force of, hey, you're gonna be a worker bee for the administration for the rest of your life, just keeps pushing you into it, crushing you and mangling you to no end. That's the negative view of things that I had back then, which looking back now, years later, is maybe partially correct, but it was also the wrong way to look at things. So I've taken personal vlogs of myself at least once a month since 2007. In this video from March 22nd, 2013, where I have Fast Fall playing in the background, I talk about how I'm going to resign from the hospital and how I'm so scared that I'm making the wrong decision. Okay, it is 12.22 a.m. 3.22.2013. I have my letter right here. It's funny, I'm looking at the screen on the camera as I'm looking at the screen on the monitor and just wondering, when I look back on this, in who knows what kind of time. Will this have been the right decision? I would be leaving to go to the corporate side of things. I didn't actually do it at the time, but it was weighing heavily on my mind in 2013. But also around that time, I was playing a lot of a video game called Dust Force, which I got in a Humble Bundle. The colorful visuals and the music were the first things that I noticed. And Humble Bundle, I don't know if they do it now, but they used to include soundtracks to some of the games. So I remember putting this on my phone and listening to it. I don't know if this is just me, but by my late 20s, I couldn't really, really remember everything that was happening all the time. And what I mean by this is that up until I was 26, I remember having intense emotional connections to any new experience to senses. If you smell something like a soap or a candle, it can bring you back to a different time. To me, images and sounds and tastes would bring me a very specific time and place. And just as a person, I could completely root myself back to that exact moment tied to that sense. But by 2013, I was getting closer to 30, and I had lost all of that. I wasn't really connected to anything anymore. Hear new music? Okay, great. There was no connection at all. The only things that connected with me were the really awful and foul smells, because you get used to that smell and not just the hospital, but also the emergency room. <laughs> Let's not get into that. I felt at the time that I had lost part of myself because nothing was new. Nothing was exciting. No new connections were being made with anything that was connected to the senses. It was just awful things all the time. And as bad as all this sounds, 2013 was actually one of the best years of my life. Which brings me back to Fast Fall. When I heard just the music without the game, something immediately connected in my brain. And remember, this is a time when those connections appear to be diminishing to me. Today is Saturday, April 20th. The time right now. Let's see. You ever have that situation where you see something and you immediately know, like, oh, that's the one? Almost to the point where it's like you've lived this lifetime before and you know that you've gotten to that exact moment where you encounter something, whether it's a person, an animal, an object, a situation, an idea, whatever the case is. You know that that's something that's going to impact your life in not just a memorable way, but in a major way. And that's how I felt when I first heard these songs stand alone. 
At the time, I didn't know exactly how this was gonna impact my life though, and this sounds so stupid. This music changed my life, but I knew for sure something was there in this music. And keep in mind, in 2013, I had no idea how to make or edit YouTube videos. YouTube wasn't even a second thought in my mind. I just had a flip camera to talk into so I could keep a personal record for myself. And for a while, I let Fastfall marinate in my head. And here's where the connection happens. In 2014, I left to go East Coast, and when I got there, within just a couple of weeks, I felt like I had made the worst mistake of my life. And keep in mind, I felt that way for the next three years afterwards. I had a friend who did Broadway in New York who recommended that I create something that I could call my own, because my professional work up to that point had always been for giant institutions, academia, global corporate. Why not try to do something on your own on the side to keep yourself sane? By that time, I definitely couldn't have done Broadway. I know nothing about that world. But the friend suggested, why not YouTube and making videos? Why not? It had the lowest barrier to entry. And so I started and my early YouTube videos were awful, but they served the purpose for me to learn how to make videos. I got in this weird groove where I felt like I had to upload every day and I didn't really like editing. So it was just kind of the same thing over and over throughout 2016. But there were some instances where I sat down and thought, hey, you know what? I could make a really good video about this topic. Obviously it was as good a video as I could make at the time, but you start to notice, or at least I can notice this because I made every single one of these, that Fastfall by Lifeform started to make its way in. Today is May 8th, 2010, and now it's about 1 a.m. My name is Bernard. Oh my god. I finally made a pledge to stop with the video game videos in the beginning of 2017 because the channel was going nowhere. And I felt like I had given up on why I started YouTube, to make something that I could call my own. I'm so miserable right now. This is awful. It's like four in the morning. I didn't sleep until two in the morning. Two hours. Why? I had also gained a bunch of weight throughout 2016. And I made a video at the beginning of that year about how I lost 60 pounds in 16 weeks, and it popped up at the end of 2016. So I thought, okay, well, how about I document fat loss vlog? And I learned so much about making videos when I finally just stopped the gaming videos, and cutting to music was a big deal to me back then. The fat loss vlog did all right, except it didn't really do all right. I was done with the fat loss part months later and people weren't watching the videos anymore. Every time I uploaded, I'd lose like 500 subs, which is a lot when you have 17,000. Today is May 21st, 2017. I just uploaded the week 16 fat loss video. Um, ideally, what I had thought was that uh, I was just gonna not do YouTube anymore after week 16. And uh, we might be there actually. Because look at this, look at this decline. It's like a sizable percentage of people who are clicking unsubscribe because they're getting pissed off at your posts. And I was at the point of cracking here. Now keep in mind, I hadn't made more than like a hundred bucks on YouTube by this time. And don't get me wrong, money is not the point of doing this. But for me, to say that I'm creating something that I can call my own and let myself have it ravage my personal life in terms of time commitment, and destroy my professional life by diverting my attention away while it's declining, underperforming, and drawing resentment from people for whatever reason, that wasn't something that I wanted to call my own. And so I was going to delete Chubby Emu in May of 2017. I sat in the room where I made all of the videos up to that point. I looked at the computer that had edited and rendered all the videos up to that point. And then I remembered, wait a second. I have video of me building that PC seven years ago back in 2010 because I take vlogs of myself and archive them. Screw the fat loss stuff, screw the video games, it's not like those people are watching anyways if they're leaving every time I upload. Bernard, how do you feel about finally constructing your computer? Good. It's freaking it's black time. behemoth. It's giant. And uh, I'll have a black mouse too. Nah, uh, go figure. Yeah. But, there goes nothing. Press it. Uh. <clears throat> wait for it, wait for it. Why not just make a video about this PC as the last thing that I ever do? So I drafted up a script, I filmed some shots of the computer, and as I was editing, it dawned on me to use the song 9-Bit Expedition by Lifeform. 
I built this PC for $1,360 in 2010. It is still my main computer now in 2017. Here's how it holds up today. The video did okay when I posted it, but like two weeks later, it got to half a million views. I just want to show you this insanity. I've hit a new record now, 2,400 views. I took lessons learned from editing to music with the fat loss vlog and put it to this video using Fastfall, and it brought Chubby Emu back from the brink. Now following this, I made a series of tech videos, which if you watch any single one of them, they were precursors to my medical video format. And what do you know about the music? It's Fastfall. Just like the fat loss vlog, the tech videos started to decline too. And by now we're in July, 2017. Earlier that year, an endocrinology colleague of mine at Johns Hopkins gave a talk at the Endocrine Society in Orlando, and he brought up a case about a woman who drank three gallons of water for a radio show contest, Hold Your Wee for a Wee. The talk was about syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone and hyponatremia, and I had seen so many cases of this in the past. During his talk, everyone was in a trance listening to him speak about this particular case, and so I spun around the idea in my head about making a video talking about this, and that brought me completely full circle. I started YouTube as a reaction to how much I despised my situation at the time, that I was quickly approaching a ceiling in my professional life, that I would always be on staff, that I would always be an expendable worker bee if not in practice at the hospital, then as a cog in a corporate global machine. Making videos on YouTube about things that I knew at a professional level wasn't something that I had even considered until that moment, because originally, I had thought YouTube was my space, where I wasn't subject to administrative lockout, where I wasn't a worker bee. Again, looking back now, <laughs> that ceiling, even if it might actually exist, was the wrong way of looking at things. And the resulting video was, A mom drank three gallons of water in two hours. This is what happened to her brain. KC is a 28-year-old woman presenting to the emergency room unconscious. Before I even recorded the video, I knew the song Frozen Hot Sauce was going to be the one that I used because that was how I visualized the song all those years ago in 2013 when I first heard it without the game. And that's the story of Chubby Emu music. The era of my life where the music comes from directly transitioned into the era of me making YouTube videos because that same dissatisfaction with my life situation appeared with the music. And as silly as it sounds, this music changed my life. In this case, it tangibly impacted my life in a way that helps accomplish what I sought out to do with being on YouTube in the first place to make something that I can call my own.